Hi, this is Chippy from yeah, PCPortal.com, and I'm going to show you now the uh, Vidiv S5 with the car kit and uh, as you saw there, Map Factor version 9, which has just been released. Map Fa Factor is a uh, software I've used on UMPCs for uh, for quite a while. I've, I've been running version 7 quite successfully, but now version 9 is out with some improved features. So uh, the Vilip S5 here is preload. I've got uh, Navigator 9 already installed, but I haven't switched the device on for a couple of days. So this is a good test to see how it works on kind of instant uh, switch on scenario to see how the, the GPS locks up. So let's um, close down the uh, uh, screen here and uh, lower the lights and uh, we'll, we'll test it out. So, let's just adjust the cam. So the Vilip S5 has been in standby for, for quite some time and um, as you can see, it comes straight into uh, Windows XP when you when you switch it on. So I'm going to just start up PC Navigator right now, which is uh, actually I think I've included it on the Cube UI interface, and you'll see how quickly that starts up from there. So PC Navigator European version is available for about 110, 115 euros with all European maps, which is actually a great deal considering this is. Um, Covering nearly every country in Europe, including some of the uh, some of the newer countries as well from the uh, from the east. And we're waiting for a GPS lock right now. So here's uh, an error that pops up: GPS timed out. So this is what I was hoping for. What what actually happens on the S5 is that the signal doesn't seem to reach the COM port, or at least be a valid signal on the signal on the COM port until it's uh, received its first lock. So I'm going to uh, put that down uh, the error away and just quickly show you this uh, mounting system while that uh, tries to get a GPS lock. So it's a typical uh, car mount, two part, one plastic holder and then a reasonably high quality uh, suction based two way adjustable stand. Uh, I have tested this for about 45 minutes on on a screen in the car and it holds very well and in fact the unit is pretty much the same as a unit I had the round digital everyone notes so I'm pretty confident of the the quality on this one basically device snaps in really easily like that there's also a, a 12 volt adapter uh, and that just plugs into the into the side there so you've got uh, power capability when you're when you're in the car. Right, let's lower the lights again and uh, zoom in. You'll see that there's still no lock. So that down there is, is where you'll get the uh, the GPS information. So that hasn't actually got a lock at the moment. So I'm just going to come out of this application um, and restart the application to see if it picks the GPS up on the second go. So we're just booting that up now. And it should try and get the uh, GPS info straight away. Now we're indoors. Um, I'm about three meters from the window. So considering this has been off for a couple of days, it would normally take a little while to get a, a GPS log and in this case it's been on a couple of minutes now and it still hasn't got a GPS log um, so this is uh, one of the problems I found with the, the S5 the GPS lock for, for the for its first attempt isn't isn't that quick try again see if we get the lock down there Currently no, no lock at all. So I'm going to switch this, uh, the the camera off now and time uh, and see how long it takes to get the GPS lock. Okay, so after a little messing around, and I actually used a different program to finally get the lock on the device. It seems to have uh, 
I've activated the GPS and we've got uh, GPS lock here a couple of meters away from the window and the details are coming up on the bottom of the screen here. The user interface is uh, very similar to the UI that we saw on Navigator 7. Uh, some enhancements though, but let me take you through a basic navigation. <laughs> Excuse me, that was the phone. Um, find and navigate. You can use uh, history. I'm going to go to a location very close here. Uh, that will um, compute the route from the current location. And and then we get details on the right hand side. If we click any of those, we get a screen up which shows you a lot of information about current speed limit, the time on the PC, time on GPS, time to destination, distance to destination, current location, current height, altitude. And each of those elements can be put into one of these three boxes here. And it makes quite useful uh, information uh, status display on the bottom right. Here's the distance to the next turn, current uh, road. You can switch to map overview to see the uh, overall uh, route and then back to the navigation display and then click anywhere on the screen and you get uh, some options. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can obviously, uh, or you can't pan the map in this mode. So menu brings you to the normal menu system but if you hit the uh, magnifying glass then you can for example find a point of interest. Uh, you can search for a point of interest or you can find the nearest uh, for example let's find the nearest uh, garage by choosing the correct category and that will be here petrol station and that will show you the links to the petrol stations you can just click one of those navigate to it it will recalculate the route and you're on your way um, there's a couple of nice uh, enhancements uh, to do with the uh, motorways in that it now shows you how many lanes there are and which lanes you can be in and which lanes you just stay off when a junction comes up. So it will show four, five or six, however many lanes there are indicators on the screen. Some will be green, some will be red, uh, which is a really nice way of, of knowing which lane you should be in as a junction comes up. Voice commands seem to be slightly improved over Navigator 7. Um, the voices seem to be the, the same though and they, they are available in, uh, in many languages. I got the European version here and there are maps for most European countries and um, considering the price of this is around 110, 120 euros, it's actually pretty good value to get all those maps on, on, on the one touch friendly application. So let's turn the navigation off here. There's a couple of other things you can do with the uh, screen when you're out of navigation mode. Uh, you can click anywhere on the screen and you can get uh, some ways of showing uh, setting navigation points and ways of end setting endpoints and going to favorites. You can also uh, zoom in on the map, move the map. At the moment this is a bitmap zoom and you can actually use um, a zoom functionality where it moves the whole map as you drag it. That slows it down a little bit but uh, it's a useful way to zoom. So we can click on a point here and set that as our destination and menu navigation and then that will set us up for navigating to that point very quickly. So I've used it on a couple of uh, a couple of journeys now and it's been pretty accurate. Um, one situation where I had to go around some traffic jams, it worked very well to, to, to route around that. And uh, overall, great improvements over Navigator 7. And uh, again, still very good, very good value. One thing I would like to see, or to have seen in this version, is integration with a, an online search capability. So Google search, maybe, given the fact that uh, there will be 3G versions of many MIDs around, many UMPCs. You could, in fact, integrate uh, online search capabilities. The other point I want to mention is the screen brightness. Mm, the Viliv S5, and I guess I'm talking about the S5 here, not the actual application itself. The S5 uh, doesn't have the brightest of uh, UMPC screens, so 
it does it doesn't work that well in bright sunlight inside a car um, devices like the Kojinsha SC3 have turned out to be be a better choice for for uh, bright sunlight use but uh, in general it's, it's still usable you just have to uh, be careful of um, using it in direct sunlight which uh, which I guess is a, <laughs> a regular occurrence in a car so watch out for that one um, but in terms of the actual software itself I have no uh, problems with the software it's crashed once in the last uh, couple of weeks of, of messing around with it and this actually isn't the final release of the software this is a, a beta version uh, sorry release candidate version I should say and uh, overall I think it's it's great it's definitely a good improvement over 7 I'll still continue to use it as my navigation software on, on new NPCs so one point here you can see speed cams in the database it will show you uh, where speed cams are there's also with the software it comes with a map uh, a PC based application for planning map planning a bit like streets and trips where you can actually plan um, plan uh, routes and then you can download them onto onto the uh, mobile navigation live navigation version of the software which is really useful you can get POI updates and also patches update patches from the web from the map factor website so overall pretty good uh, no complaints on the software at all um, syncing up to your GPS com port is automatic although it can take uh, 10 to 15 minutes before it actually goes through all the settings and all the com ports if you've got a lot of com ports um, but it found, found it for me in the end which was good Okay, so that's uh, PC Navigator 9 from Map Factor, running on the Vulev S5, available for about 110, 115 euros uh, at mapfactor.com. This is Chippy UMC Portal, thanks for watching.